so if you, if you didn't get it um, when I was talking to the kids in um, the children's time, I'm a little bit like Crowley, the king of hell. I like to have things my own way. I like to do it my way. But eventually I go, oh, for the greater good, I will do this. I've been a loner, independent kind of person like that all of my life. And last week, as Bill reminded us, we were talking about what it means to be a disciple in the world. And part of what it means to be a disciple is, is that we bring what we have to the community to offer it so that the community might be stronger. And I've had many students over the years say to me, how can you be trained in psychology and teaching us to give up our individuality? I'm not saying that. Let's just clear that up right now. I'm not saying that you need to give up your individuality. We are all created in the image and likeness of God. We are all unique parts of God. And if you give that up, how can you be able to function if you're not the person that God creates you to be? But what I am saying is this, is that we need to understand that individuality is prized in our society above everything else. We are taught, be the best that you can be. Be the best that you can be. Not be the best that all of us can be. Be the best that you can be. We are taught there are winners and there are losers, and you better not be a loser. You need to win. Be a winner. We are taught that what you want is what you should deserve and you should get because you are who you are. You are an individual and everything that you want and everything that you desire is what you should have. And we are taught that if you don't have it, you are less than. You are the weaker members of society. You are the ones who don't deserve respect because you are the less respectful. If you don't Claim that individuality and use it and get what you want in this world. What I suggest <clears throat> when we think about our individuality, we think about how we go to that extreme. That extreme where everything that we want and everything that we believe that we should have is more important to us than something else in this world. You know that happens in Supernatural a lot. Dean, my favorite character, Dean, he's always trying to go it alone. He's always trying to protect everybody and do it himself without the rest of the team. He's always trying to grab onto his individual understanding of what is best in this world and impose it on the rest of the team. Is it no wonder that I identify with Dean also? But this individuality always gets him in trouble. And what these two brothers, who are the central characters of that show, remember is, is that they are better together. You see, when individuality is our extreme, it tells us that the community isn't as important as God thinks it is. When our individuality says, well, you don't have to do that, we forget that God has called the community together to do it together. You see, when we're in the extreme of our individuality, we want what we want and we take it for ourselves and we don't think about the fact that maybe one of the weakest members among us is in need of something that we have. I've been thinking a lot about this question of individuality since Bill brought it up last week during our discussion downstairs because another person came up to me and said, I hate it when you make us think hard. I hate it when you make us think hard. Thinking hard means that maybe there's something there that God wants us to know. So just go on a little journey with me. Think about all the times during the day that you say, I. I want it this way. I want this. I need this. I will do it. It is for me, for me. You know, there are places where we learn that it's all about me, not you, me, 
not you, me, not you, me. It's all about me. And there are places where we learn that God says, it's okay for it to be all about you, and not you, me. And we glom onto that because I is more important than we. How many times a day do you think you say the word I? Ten? I'd say that's a low estimate. Probably more like 50, don't you think? That we focus in on what I want and we forget about the rest. Individuality is not bad, as my disciple students have feared. But individuality in its extreme is killing us. Individuality, when we take it to that point where it's all about me and not about everyone, is what is killing us as a society. It's also killing the church. Some people think that in the mainstream church, the reason why the mainstream church is dying is because we don't preach enough about how God is going to help only you. And we take that personal message. Some people think that if we were to preach in the mainstream church about how God will give you everything you want and that God wants to favor you above others, that the churches in the mainstream would be packed. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I believe that the mainstream church suffers simply because individuality has taken over. Individuality means I don't have to care about getting up and being here on a Sunday morning because, you know what, there'll be 25 people there anyway. What do they need me for? Individuality means that when there is a call for something that is needed for the greater community, oh, somebody else will do it. Individuality means that we say, oh, well, you know what, I did that 20 years ago. I don't need to help you with that anymore. Individuality means that we make our relationship with God all about us and not understand those very sophisticated scriptures that say that our individual natures are what God calls us to use to make the community stronger. Individuality focuses in on that wonderful saying that's been tossed around for the last 30 years, I have my personal relationship with Jesus. Well, now that is true. You need to have that. It is true that you need to have a relationship with Jesus, but not exclusively, not just for you. Do you know that your relationship with Jesus is for somebody else? Jesus can save you, but your job is to then proclaim that. If you keep it all for yourself, it's like the old tiny hymn that says, hide it under a bushel. That him goes on to say, no, don't do that. Don't keep it all for yourself. Individuality is not wrong, but individuality in the extreme, when we believe that our individual personhood is more important than anyone else's, is what is killing us in this world. You know, the Apostle Paul thought about that a lot, I think. Because when you read the letters of Paul, the, the real letters of Paul, and you listen to what he's saying, do you know most of the time what he's doing is he's trying to teach the churches that it's not all about each of you individually. It's about all of you together. This beautiful, wonderful writing that he does to the First Corinthian church shows us that more than anything else in the scripture beyond where he writes that we are neither Jew nor Greek, that we are ne neither male nor female. He's going into Corinth, and they're asking him, what are we supposed to be doing? Because, you know, those people over there, they're the bad ones. And the people in Corinth were fighting, fighting, fighting all the time about who was the greatest one. And Paul says, if an eye tells a foot that the foot needs to be an eye, what's going to happen to the body? Paul liked to use that idea of the human body to make people understand what was going on because it was something that physically they could understand. Your foot can't be an eye or you would, I would have to preach like this so I saw you all, right? 
my eye can't be a foot or I would be walking like this, right? Paul uses these wonderful images that teach us that we have to be individuals that come together in a community and our individuality is used to enhance the community, not to dominate it, not to control it, not to shape it into our will, but to enhance the community. Enhance is a word that I've had to use a lot with married couples that come to me to get married. They, when they talk to me about what they have come together as a, as a couple with, a lot of times I have to correct their language. And that is, is that you enhance one another. You don't make one another who each other is. You enhance. That's the way Paul is asking us to use our individuality to enhance the community of God around us. That our individuality is needed because without it, the community is suffering. So I just have a question for you. Bill, you always start us off so well on these sermons, Bill, I'm telling you. He's our John the Baptist, right? <laughs> He's saying, think about this, think about this. I have this question to ask you. What in your individuality are you willing to give away so that you can have more space for the community? What is it about your individuality that you are so clinging to that is your autonomy, that is you have to be this and no one can take it away from you, that perhaps maybe if you moved it out of the way, you'd have more space for the community, for the communal good. I know mine. I know mine. Do you have any sense of what yours is? Mine is time. It's my time. It's not your time. You want to come see me? It's my time. It's not your time. Maybe if I moved away from that a little bit, it would help the community come together and be enhanced. What about um, my money? It's my money, not your money, it's my money. But maybe if we moved out of that idea that it's all ours and instead saw that God blesses us for the community to grow and be enhanced. What about, no, I can't do that because I don't have this gift. Maybe you do and God is telling you that, but you're boundary oriented to the point where you are a rigid block rather than an open person. What part of your individuality are you willing to let go of so that your spice, as Pusto would say, can come into the community and help it to be enhanced? to help it to be more flavorful, to help it be what God is asking it to be. Paul says to the Corinthians, every person in this community is important, and without it, without each individual, the community would suffer and wouldn't be what God wants it to be. But if we take our individuality to the extreme, we find out we're not enhancing the community. We're harming it. We're actually causing harm if we use our individuality as a shield against the community. So that's a tough, hard question that I hope that you'll ponder this week. What is that part of your individuality that God is asking you to set aside so you can become more of an enhancement to the community. Maybe it's time, maybe it's money, maybe it's thoughts, maybe it's control, maybe it's that need to have everybody do what you think they ought to be doing. But it's something, it's something. And if we are to be the community that God calls us to be, each and every one of us has to figure out what that is and be willing to let it go so that the community can thrive because it's through the community that God is doing great things in this.